Right. Hi, I'm Steve from 123 3D. Today we're going to be doing quite an in-depth review on the Ender 3 V3 SC model. Going over the pros and the cons of this machine so that you can make an informed decision as to if, if this is going to be the right printer for you. The build volume for this machine is 220 millimeters. 220 millimeters by 250 millimeters then you have a typical print speed of 180 millimeters and it does claim to have a maximum print speed of 250 millimeters a second now i can't confirm that because i haven't tested the machine to that speed but i do know that it quite happily prints at 180 millimeters a second with the quality that you can see on the table before you the machine also has the auto bed leveling function the pc sprung steel removable build plate a maximum nozzle temperature for 260 degrees and the build plate will heat to 100 degrees inside is equipped with a 32-bit silent main board you have a color screen rotary knob display so the printer is a very well specced machine for the price point <laughs> The overall setup, beginner user experience is a lot more simple straight out of the box. I think that was Creality's main aim with this series of printer. Uh, comparing it to its predecessors, for those of you that have been used to using the Ender 3 S1 on the S1 Pro, this machine is very much on a par with those grade machines, albeit this has a few upgrades over that. Pairing the prices previously, those machines were quite costly. They were the higher end of the Ender series at that time, whereas this is one of the cheapest current to date modern day printers that you, you can get with probably more functions than the S1 series. Quality have achieved this by making quite a few tweaks to the machine. The first thing that they've done is they've cut some of the cost by providing the machine with a full injection molded base opposed to the T-slot extrusions we would have been used to seeing previously. They've also changed the profile on the axis for how I could only describe as a T-profile extrusion opposed to the traditional rectangular t-slot extrusions this has done a couple of things it's one it's narrowed the actual footprint of the machine so everything's more compact and streamlined it's removed proportional amount of weight from the machine as well because obviously there's less aluminium less weight however that said it is still extremely rigid you're not going to flex these rails in any way and they do look quite aesthetically pleasing the x-axis is exactly the same as the predecessor albeit the the stepper motor is now mounted on the inside of the machine opposed to on the outside edge of the machine that you'd have been used to before it's quite a, a clever design it narrows the footprint so you know you, you've got more space saving so other parts that they've changed the bed is probably one of the biggest changes that they've made to this machine. Traditionally before this, we would have been used to an extrusion profile in the middle of the machine. The bed ran along that on V wheels. The smooth rails do a good job of, of giving you quite rigid bed. They're spaced out fairly well apart. You've got a, a decent distribution of the weight across the build plate and there isn't really much flex. Whereas this system, the bed slides along with two smooth linear rails. There is no manual leveling required. Beginners really, really struggled at some points with this process and I can appreciate it caused an awful lot of frustration. It is fully automatic. The actual extruder is fitted with a CR touch probe inside the cover, which will perform a bed mesh. And then you've got a strain gauge sensor built into the bed on the front left hand corner so what that'll do is that will basically allow the machine to automatically set the z offset which is still tunable via the control panel if you need to do that the machine does also have power recovery which is quite a useful function so if you have a power outage for any reason or you accidentally switch off the power to the printer you can resume the print and it works in my experience with the quality print is relatively well it saves any wasted print so if you're like 20 hours into a print and the power goes off you know that you can save that print and can get it finished. I'll move the printer around so I can show you all around the machine. So again, we have a standard SD card slot. So you slice your files, save them onto the card, pop the card in the machine, load them up and away you go. You've also got dual lead screws driven by one stepper motor, synchronized with a belt. Quite a, quite a nice design, so there's no flex in the axis in any way. You've got nice even motion up and down. You still have this axis running on your, on your V wheels which are adjustable, but again, we've not really seen the need to adjust these. They've come pretty well set up out of the factory. The only things that you may need to do out of the box is tension your axis belt. So this axis 
travels on a belt and it is tensioned by a socket head screw on this end of the machine. Very simple to do, something that all printers will require is manual tension into the belts as they wear, stretch and whatever else. The bed again is driven by a quite clever design. So the older machines, the stepper motor was mounted on the rear of the machine. This was then driving the belt backwards and forwards. They've cut space with this because they've now mounted the stepper motor inside the actual casing so that your belt travels all concealed within the base. It's very neat, tidy, and again, you can quite easily tension it just by tweaking the socket head bolt on the back of the machine. This machine comes with a standard sprung steel removable build plate. It's like a vinyl finish. My only criticism for this is that anybody that's wanting to print higher temperatures and materials like ABS, they may want to consider upgrading this to the textured PEI build plate, which is a lot more durable and more hard wearing, shall we say, to, to higher temperatures. But for basic PLA, this build plate is absolutely fine. They also now include two little slots, so it makes line up the bill plate really easy just slide it into place you know exactly where it's sitting there's no need to mess around trying to line it up the extruder a sprite hybrid extruder i'd call it it's very similar design to the sprite extruders that you would have seen on the s1 series of crowley's printers albeit housed in a slightly different case with a, a different cooling method the heater cartridge on the sc model is a standard heater cartridge it is more than capable of printing materials like pla pet g tpu you, you could probably print ABS and ASA with it as well if you if you put the printer into an enclosure. Connectivity. So there are a couple of options with this machine that would allow you to connect remotely. They have supplied a couple of extra USB ports on the machine. These allow for connectivity with the Nebula system that Reality have released. And I'm sure seasoned users would be able to run it via a Raspberry Pi on Octoprint if they wanted to quite easily. The overall print quality for the machine is quite impressive. As you can see, we've, we've printed a few items on this machine, a wicker basket that's got some quite nice overhangs and whatever else. And this came out as a relatively clean print. There's no real string in, there's no real visible layer lines or major issues or flaws in the print in any way. So overall, quite a good quality. A small skull, again, nice clean print, no stringing, and again, quite satisfactory print quality from, from a machine of this price. We also printed a rocket that's two parts, just to check how accurate the dimensional ac accuracy is between separate parts. And again, it fitted together relatively easily with no real trouble. We haven't set up the machine, calibrated it, tweaked it in any way. We wanted to give a fair and open, honest opinion. All the files have been sliced via the Quality Print app, which I'd solely recommend that beginners use to start with. But for the beginner, I think it's the, the best slicer to use with this range of printers. A lot of people get a bit frustrated with it because the layout isn't quite what they're used to and they don't think that there's enough settings in the slicing software because they're unaware of the advanced toggle switch. Once you've opened that, there is a whole host of settings that you can play with and tweak for this machine. Creality have optimized that slicer for these printers. So straight off the bat, you'll be able to use the default profiles, slice a file, save it to your SD card, put it in the printer, load up your filament, and away you go without any need to do anything else. As you gain more experience, you'll want to start playing around with different things. And then obviously as your experience grows, then by all means, you can look at other slices like Orca Slicer, Prusa Slicer, and whatever really takes your fancy. But I would wholeheartedly recommend that you do start off with the Creality Print Slicer. The negatives for this, for this machine. There is a couple of downsides, which some people may say is, is a big thing. Some people may not be bothered about it, but I'll point them out anyway. One thing for me, the machine is braced at the top with an injection molded brace, as you can see here. The filament spool holder here is fixed to the brace and it is screwed in via heat inserts. Do the job perfectly. The only problem with this is if you were to load a larger spool of filament on here, over a kilogram, you are going to see flex, which doesn't flex the machine, but does flex this top brace. So that's one thing to be aware of. You know, we, we've only used one kilogram spools on here. We haven't encountered any issues with it. The other thing that people from the Ender series would be used to is the machine actually having a drawer. This machine doesn't have a drawer. If you wanted a drawer or a storage, it'd be quite easy to model something up for your print. So either stand on with a drawer underneath it or an add-on to the side of the machine. Overall, it's a quite well thought out design. I mean, it's not perfect, but for the price point, I don't think there's anything currently on the market that would boast the specs that this machine has. I think what we'll do now is we'll flip the machine up. We'll take the base off the machine so we can see what's inside. Thank you. 
So just remove the base from the machine just to give you guys a peek of how the machine's put together and what's in the actual guts of the machine. First off, we've got the standard 350 watt Creality power supply, which is quite neatly tucked out of the way. First inspection, all the connections are, are really well made. They've used nice crimp connectors. Everything's neat and tidy. No issues there. The actual machine, as I said before, is injection molded base. What they've done to ensure that you've got a nice rigid platform is they've fitted in a nice aluminium profile that to be fair is probably five mil thick. It does have a bend on it, so it's gonna be extremely rigid. The axis aluminium extrusion is screwed through this, so it's really, really well made. Um, there's gonna be no problem here with any any flex or bending. Go down then to the main board. We've got a nice looking 32-bit silent main board fitted in here. What Crowley have done noticeably different, the actual power cables that come into the board so you've got your power in and then you power out for your heated bed. They've added ferrule connectors to the ends of the cables. On previous printers, they did ship quite a few of them just with soldered tinned connectors. And the problem with that is over a period of time, they could become loose. So unless you're not periodically checking them to make sure they're tight, there is a risk of short circuits. With the ferrules, that is pretty much eliminated. It's a nice, neat connection. The Fan on the base, cools the main board, cools all the stepper drivers, so there's no risk there of the board becoming overheated. Everything looks to be well thought out, to be fair. It's neat, tidy, and appears to all be very well put together. So pros and cons to this machine. Fire transfer, currently we use the SD card, but again, there will be the functionality to add remote options to this printer should you choose to. Supported filament types. Now, Corality claim that you can use PLA, PETG, and TPU. The temperature range that the machine's capable of, I can't see any problem with you also being able to use ABS if you wanted to, or even ASA, because they're around about the 250 260 mark so i can't see any issues with that at all the nice streamlined aluminium extrusions as i've already mentioned downsides this machine does lack the filament runout sensor which may not be a big issue to a lot of users i mean typically for me i wouldn't expect to be using over a kilogram on the build volume for this machine so it wouldn't really be an issue the other downside as i've mentioned before is this plastic injection molded top brace but again it is you know it's really well made it, it, there's plenty of reinforcement underneath there it isn't thin flimsy plastic by any means if you were planning on putting a big 3 kg spool of filament on here I could see it being a problem while printing. But typically for, for the one kilogram spools, half kilogram spools, no issue whatsoever. It, you know, it, it, it does what it's supposed to do. In summary, the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE is a great entry printer for anybody who is looking to dabble in the world of 3D printing at an affordable price point. However, with all of its pluses, I would suggest that if you can stretch a little further in your budget, then the KE is definitely a worthy contender as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and be sure to check out 123.3d.co.uk. Again, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices in the UK. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream UK retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we will do our very best to beat their price.